Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about indexing and a tool that I would like to make. So this um, indexing wheel here is what I built for my lathe and I made a video for a, um, a collet chuck for my lathe recently and I actually used this tool to um, mark out uh, four evenly spaced um, areas on the collet chuck so I could drill some holes into it for the chuck key to you know tighten it up and loosen it off and this system works really well um, it's just a, a, a spring-loaded plunger here has a point goes into the hole um, you pull the plunger out turn it round, and into the next hole that you want to um, line up to get it in the right position now the problem is, uh, I've built this for the lathe and I don't actually have any indexing options for the mill, well, I guess apart from square and hex collet blocks, but if I needed 10 evenly spaced holes or maybe if I wanted to cut some gears, that's where you really need some decent indexing equipment. A dividing head is probably the ideal piece of equipment because it gives you a huge flexibility on indexing. However, a dividing head here in New Zealand is going to cost me over a thousand dollars. So it's really crazy prices over here. And I really don't know what the story is, but we seem to really get ripped off over here on this type of stuff. So I wouldn't mind making a dividing head uh, for the mill. That would be a, a really good and probably challenging project. Um, but I wanted to take a step back and build something maybe a little bit more simple, like a spin indexer. I know what most of you are thinking is, hey man, why don't you just go and buy one? They're only like $65. Yeah, that's right. Here we see from Amazon, the spin indexer is $63 there. But let's have a look at New Zealand prices. So this is New Zealand's major online auction company. Now looking at second-hand indexes, and usually the second-hand indexes are not your cheap Chinese ones, so you know they go for maybe a grand, thousand uh, dollars. They're not cheap. However, they got some of these Chinese ones, just like the Amazon one here, the PF70 5C Collet Spin Dexer. And, I mean, look at the price there, $493. You've got to ask yourself, who's ripping off who here? I mean, it's the same model as the one in the Amazon advertisement. And I know what you're thinking, oh, you know, New Zealand, the dollar's not strong. But US dollars, you know, two New Zealand dollars is one US dollar. So, you know, I should be able to buy this for $125, $130. So someone's making a lot of money on that. And there was another guy, he doesn't advertise anymore on Trade Me, but he was selling them for $630. Anyway, I can't afford that kind of money, and a spin dexer doesn't look to be too hard to make. So that's what this project is all about. Let's make a spin dexer. Okay, let's have a look at the drawing I've done up here. The body of the spin dexer, it's kind of made up of three parts, I guess. There's a piece along the bottom here, that's a 125 millimeter, about five inches um, square plate, 20 millimeters thick, so that's just over three quarters of an inch thick. And then there's a sort of pedestal that goes up, and then it goes into this um, round uh, tube, well, round, it's going to be a solid bar. Um, same stuff that I made the collet chuck out of, uh, so I'm going to have fun boring the hole out of that. So that's um, 75 millimeters in diameter, which is about three inches, and it will have uh, the hole in the middle here is 43 millimeters. Uh, this round circle here, right in the center, which is 33 millimeters in diameter, is actually the hole in the shaft that goes down. I haven't drawn the shaft, but just ignore that center circle at the moment. So basically it's uh, the outer ring and this middle ring, um, 
for our top part of the spin dexa housing. Now I don't have any uh, 20 millimeter plate, although I do have 10 millimeter plate, um, and I really did want to build this project out of stuff that I already have. So I was going to use two bits of 10 millimeter uh, plate, and I was going to plug weld them together, similar to this. Um, bit that comes up here to hold the round bit at the top. I don't have any 32 millimeter wide steel but I do have 16 millimeter wide steel so there'll be two bits of those steel welded together as well. And then as I said I've got plenty of that 75 millimeter round stock that we'll use for the top. I'm not sure if you can see it in this uh, drawing but I've recessed down here two or three millimeters as well. So I, I plan to mill all this up in the milling machine and I'll put a little recess in this plate at the bottom um, and then this pedestal can fit into it so that I know it's nice and square and straight up and down. And similar to at the top here as well for the round part, I'll um, cut a recess into here so that it can fit in there. And I was just planning on uh, putting some bolts up here and bolting it all together as opposed to welding it but let's see how that goes maybe you might have a change of mind later on so, so these sizes are kind of i think the same size as those um spindexes that i mentioned that you can buy although this one here is 100 millimeters high so that's four inches high whereas i think the ones that um that were in those advertisements are three inches high so they're only 75 millimeters high and I've made this an extra 25 millimeters or an inch higher so that a bigger disc can be put on it so you can have um, more holes uh, around the disc around the perimeter of the disc so that's the reason for that and then the other parts to this will be the shaft that goes down the center and that will be a 43 millimeter shaft to slide into here um, and it will have a 33 millimeter hole down the center of it and that's just so if I have anything long that I need to put into the spindexer here um, it can actually go through the whole machine. Now the spindexers that uh, you can buy that we looked at earlier um, they are 5C spindexes, and I think you can get ER spindexes as well, but I haven't really seen many people using them. So most of them that I've seen are the 5C collet spindexes. Now I've got ER40 collets, I don't have any 5C collets, so the shaft that I make down the center here will be machined to take a ER40 collet. So I'll get on to cutting out some steel and welding this stuff together. I was just going to start on the, um, the bottom plate and this riser, maybe get that cut off as well. And then it's just a whole lot of machining to get the body of the spindexer complete. Okay, we've got our base plates cut out. Uh, so as I mentioned, these will be welded together to give me the 20 millimeters that I need or just over three quarters of an inch. So I've done a bit of layout here. This thing that looks like a road is the little two or three millimeter channel that I'll be cutting out for the piece that fits in here and the round cylinder goes on top. Um, so uh, three millimeters, that's about an eighth of an inch. So what I wanted to do was to mark out where I can plug well without causing any uh, issues with, um, you know, trying to mill through hard weld. So that's the channel. Um, so I didn't want any plug welds in there. These bits here on each side 
will be cut out. So this is where the spin dexter will be bolted down onto the table of the mill. And I also need to tidy up all around the edges here. So there's probably, um, could be five millimeters, what's that, three sixteenths that comes off um, or two, two and a half millimeters each side. So I didn't want the plug welds to be uh, too close to the edges as well. So I've gone with uh, one, two, three in each corner. And of course, when it's bolted down to the mill, there will be pressure around this area as well. So I think that's gonna be plenty strong enough. That's not gonna have any problems moving, I don't think. We have made some progress here today. So I have 
pretty much finished the base and the pedestal bit that holds the, the round piece at the top. So as mentioned, that's um, two pieces of 10 millimeter or three eight. So it's just over, I guess, three quarter now, um, 20 millimeters thick. Milled a three millimeter or one eight channel down the middle here. And this is a very nice fit. Might be just a little bit snug, but I think it's pretty good. Um, and I haven't machined the top here because I'm going to wait until I get the uh, the cylinder all bored out so that I can work out um, what height to mill the slot like this one in the cylinder. And according to my drawing there it's 43 millimeter hole that I need in the center so that's going to be a little bit of drilling and boring uh, with this material. So it is kind of hard. Um, you can get through it, but you have to run the lathe at pretty low speed. So, you know, that's going to be a while to bore that out. And once that's bored out and I've cut the recess in here um, and sort of worked out the right height, uh, then I'm going to bolt all this together. And I mentioned um, that earlier, whether I bolt it or, or weld it. And I'll probably bolt it because if I need to add any features to the cylinder later on I can unbolt it all and put it back in the lathe and and do what I need to do and then once the cylinder's all done and the bolt holes are all drilled and threaded uh, then it will be the spindle itself that we need to make up and that's going to be machined to take an ER40 collet
Okay, I've got the cylinder part pretty much finished here. And I tell you what, it was a bit of a mission um, machining this. Uh, it's machinable, but very, very slow going. So underneath, it's just got a uh, recess in there. Um, and that's where this block fits into. And that just makes it easier just to line up this way for when I actually do fix it on here. And in terms of fixing, um, I'm just wondering whether I do bolt this or whether I actually just weld it. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a lot easier just to get it all lined up and clamp it in the vise and then weld it together. I don't think there are any other bits and pieces I need on here anyway, so this is pretty much done. You saw I cut a recess um, in the ends here, and that's for a thrust bearing to go in here. So they have these uh, quite thin ones, they're about 5 millimeters. I think that's 3 sixteenths. Uh, needle roller thrust bearings. I mean there's really no load on here, it's just to make it easy to turn and um, it all set seats on the bearings at the front and the back. I've also milled a little bit out of here um, and the reason for that is I'm going to make a a cap that goes over here, a dust cap type of thing. So it'll fit on the shaft that comes through the middle here um, and it will spin with the shaft but there'll be a clearance around here and it will just slide over the top of that just to keep the dust out of the bearing. I probably went down a bit too far, but nah, it doesn't matter. And I mean, it kind of looks a little robotic with all the square corners and stuff. I'll probably round these off, um, you know, a little bit later on, maybe in the corners here. So there is another part to, to make for this sort of base and cylinder. And that's the um, plate that has the indexing holes in it so it has sort of a I think I've got the right term a vernier scale the indexes that you get off eBay and, and those places have uh, 10 holes in here and it allows you to get in between the 10 degrees that are on the disc at the back here so um, you know the disc has 36 holes and if you go in one of those holes then you can actually stay in that hole but move this um, locating pin along a 10 hole sort of vernier type thing. And that splits your degrees up into one degree increments. So that needs to be mounted on here as well. But I'm going to make that piece when I make up the plate with the 36 holes that goes in the back. Uh, this line, you might be wondering what that is there for. I don't know why it's there. It just showed up. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I turned the dial the wrong way, I'm not sure, but um, well, I mean, I'm not going to make the part again, <laughs> tell you that now. If it ever gets stolen, I know it's mine because it's got this uh, line around here.
I have the body of the spin indexer pretty much done. Uh, you saw me put a, there's an M10 thread go in here. I mean, this stuff was really hard. It was a lot of, you know, putting the taper tap in and then putting the bottom tap in and then back to the taper and back to the bottom tap just to eat away at it. I was very scared of um, breaking a tap off. It's kind of pretty hard, but I got through it in the end. Uh, this bolt is just to check the thread. Uh, there will be um, a thumb screw put in here um, and that's to lock the spindle in the position that you want it. So I'll make that up maybe out of aluminium and then it won't sort of, you know, put dents into the spindle. You saw me honing the inside out. That feels really, really good. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, if I need to hone it a bit more later, I will but I will work out what size I need for the spindle and we'll um, turn that down to diameter and then make it all fit nicely. There are probably a couple more holes I need to drill in here or drill and tap down this end and that's for that uh, vernier scale uh, that's going to be mounted here. Um, but I can't make that until I know the diameter of the indexing wheel with the 36 holes and then how high this needs to be to line up with those holes. So I'll do that part um, a bit later on. The next step is to make the spindle and I'm going to use this um, piece of 50 millimeter solid round so that's two inches and it's um, pretty plenty long enough to go through here and have enough room for the ER40 collet at the front um, you know, uh, a, a locking ring at the back and maybe a handle to go on to turn it around if we need to turn it around. So that's what we're going to use there. Now, the problem I have, I need to turn this down the outside diameter and I need to bore a hole down the center. Now turning the outside diameter is easy. I can just put a center in the back and just turn it down. Uh, boring the hole, I need to have a steady rest for this to hold it all secure. It's far too long um, out of the chuck, that length there. And I don't have a steady rest for my lathe. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, this video has been going for quite a while now, so I will make this in another video. Um, but in between that time, I will make a video on building a steady rest. So, in the next video that uh, you see me machining or working on this project, uh, there will be a steady rest video out there for you to see if you're interested in seeing how I've done that. So if you do like my videos, subscribe and click the notifications if you want to be notified when new videos come out. So I hope everyone has a good day and once again, thanks for watching.